So I've been really enjoying Flutterflow. It's been allowing me to get into the app space really quickly without having to endure any really big learning curves like you might find with React Native or Android development. And I can just be productive straight off the mark. And Flutterflow integrates natively with Firebase, which is everything you need for building full stack mobile applications. And as I was trying out the combination, I gotta say, I was really impressed for about an afternoon. And then I started to see why Firebase just probably wasn't gonna work out for me. So to be more specific, my gripe is actually with Firestore, which is the NoSQL database that comes with Firebase. So yesterday I started a new project just to play around with Firestore. Uh, it's a booking platform for a, like a hypothetical co-working space. I made some tables for booking your desk, some admin pages. I was basically just playing around uh, to get to know Firebase and Firestore. I also did some custom functions and, you know, just to get things the way that I wanted them. At the end of the day, I took a look at my Firebase analytics and my billing metrics and 3.8K reads on the Firestore database. I was like, what? I was ragging my brain. I was trying to imagine how my little app could possibly have accumulated that many reads. I just thought maybe a few hundred reads. I was just kind of working, testing things out for an afternoon. So I did some Googling. And the first thing I found is that the Firebase console actually counts towards reads. Like, okay, I guess that's not so shocking, but it does update in real time. And so the read count can actually get out of hand pretty quickly if you're not careful. The API calls in the app were also contributing a lot. I somehow did 40 deletes. I mean, to my recollection, I did one or two. I didn't really feel like spending the whole night analyzing where all of the different reads and deletes were going. The fact is, it seemed to me that if I was going to use Firestore as my primary database, it was probably going to mean stressing about my costs blowing up. And the last thing you want is to be stressing over the fact that your app might be successful. The other thing about Firestore is that you're stuck using a NoSQL database. And if you want SQL, you can't have it. They do have a SQL offering now, but that's not available in Flutterflow yet. Supabase is the obvious alternative choice if you want to go the SQL route. So I looked into making the next trial app with Supabase. But I immediately started seeing some potential headaches. For example, push notifications seem deeply ingrained in the Firebase ecosystem in terms of Flutterflow and how it works. So you might have confusing choices to make in terms of auth and push provider. You could use one signal, for example, but now you have Firebase and Supabase and one signal. And it's very possible that you're going to have to do some custom coding and create custom actions and custom functions in Flutterflow in order to make Superbase off and the push notifications work the way that they're supposed to. And plus Superbase can ex get expensive as you scale as well, unless you self-host it, which is what led me to my conclusion. You might as well just host your own backend. Okay, now you have Firebase controlling the auth, triggering functions in the background for notifications and deep links that are all provided natively with Flutterflow, handling device tokens, which is also native and is a real pain to do by yourself. And that's all in the user model, but it's not your primary database. And so you can do all of your heavy business logic and querying on your own server. So if it's an option for you at all, my suggestion is actually to build your own API. I do my APIs in Python, I uh, use a framework called Fast API, and I set up the backend to receive the JWT token from Firebase, and then I verify it on the backend. And now you have all the custom logic that you want. And this greatly cuts down on doing all the actions, gymnastics that you might have to do in Flutterflow to keep responses from the API calls formatted exactly the way you want them. And you would still use Firebase Auth for authorization. All you have to do is send the JWT token via Flutterflow to your own custom backend and verify it there. You just add it as a simple header on the API call and you're done. Thanks so much for watching the video to the end. If you have any questions or if you're interested in me diving deeper in a future video into anything that I've skimmed on today, please just leave a comment. I'll be making more videos soon, so please subscribe to the channel if you're interested in any of these topics, and I'll see you soon.